Come on now, people. I've been telling you for almost two years now, you need to have a GNR TV. And now sports are back. Football is back. Now is the perfect time for you to get this if you don't have it already. And if you look on over here, as I've been telling you before, you get all these amazing channels, every single one of them, for $20 a month for two devices. And if you look on up over here, it's written. It's written everything you get with GNR TV. If you want four devices, $40. And there's some cool extras right here. GNR TV, streaming done right. If you don't have it, get it. What more can I say? What more can I say? It's time to cut the damn cord, stop being ripped off by the dish and cable, and get this lovely thing we call GNR TV. Streaming done right. Let's get slicing and dicing with Sir Sturdy Horror fans. On this podcast, you will hear me and a guest do some movie reviews, random funny horror chats, and whatever else comes to mind. So tune in, kick back, relax, and always remember, I'll see you in your nightmares. Well, this Jason's mask. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another exciting episode of Horror Research 30. I have my guest, I believe for the third time now, Chelsea. Chelsea, how's it going? Hi, what's up, guys? It's great to have you back again. We were just talking about the Crumbs movie, some spoiler stuff. I don't want to I don't want to spoil this movie for you <laughs> until I do my own review for it. But um, what I will say is everybody check out this movie, The Crumbs, on Amazon Prime. Awesome, awesome movie. And 13th Cross, is that out on Amazon or anything yet? Not yet. Um, I, I think it's slated for March right now, so it's coming. But um, we had our premiere for it recently, so um, it turned out fantastically. I can say that, but um, it'll be available to the public probably March. So uh, that's exciting. I'm excited to show it to you guys. It's like it's really gritty and strange, but <laughs> I think it's a really good film. It's different. All right. I, that film I won't say too much about. I will just say that film is very, very different. <laughs> And I will say I I did enjoy it and like what the guy was doing in the movie and why he was doing it. I liked I respected the reason why I understood the reason why. And then how he got his self caught up in that same exact situation. And that's Mm -hmm. that's pretty much all I could say about it without saying too much. Yeah, Yeah, it's like that that one that one's hard because it has like such a big, like kind of weird twist in the middle of it. And like sometimes I wanna talk about that weird twist because that was something that I had done like for the very first time as an actor, like in that film. Um, Mm -hmm. And so like when I go on these shows and stuff, I like, I want to talk about what it was like to do that, but it's like saying that like just makes it lose its magic. And that like that freak out moment that you guys are going to have in the middle of the movie, um, like it would ruin it if I said what it was, but um, it, when you watch it, just know it was pretty weird (laughs) for me to do that. (laughs) But um, I, I like doing these kind of like I like I like doing most genres and um, the the fun, like more lighthearted genres are fun, too. But um, I liked that the, the 13th Cross was like dark and strange, you know, because I think that sometimes you just you have to make a movie like that. Like <laughs> you just you just have to do that sometimes. I agree. I agree. I, again, you did a really good job. Like, thank you. You're um. I like your like just from watching the three different movies because there's there are three different movies and you're a different person in each movie like you're a different type of actress or a different character but I mean like I like how in each one you take that role really really well like I've told you before like your facial expressions you're doing with your eyes I don't know how the hell you do it but you do an amazing job with it because there's you. a lot of actors and actresses that don't have like that like and one of the movie say in the movie you look concerned you look scared you have like a a evil connivingness in this movie, The Crumbs, which is awesome. But it's it's like an evil conniving slash innocent. Like, I can't explain it. All I have to say is, people, you have to watch this movie. You're Thank really you. The Crumbs movie. <laughs> and I will say this too: if you guys go back and watch the first interview that Chelsea and I did, the second interview, and this one, I swear each one is more fun because the first one you were kind of more shy, the second one you opened up, and then this one you were just 
right up right away, which I think is just awesome. I think it's amazing. And I'm I'm happy for you for that too as well. Thank you. Yeah, I can definitely see myself in that too because um the the first one that I did like with you was like the second time I had done like one of these interviews like at all. Um and so like I was just like worried about all this like weird stuff that I'm not like worried about anymore. Um, one of the things that I used to like worry about a lot, um, especially on these like press interviews is um, like I'm 21 and I'm like, I'm usually like the youngest one, like in the movie. And mm -hmm. like, obviously like, you know, the directors are always older than me and like the, like people like you, like the hosts and stuff are always like older. And um, so like, I used to be worried about like, I obviously like being 21, I have like the young lingo, you know, and I used to like, I'd go on these interviews and I'd be like, I have to talk older. I can't say like so much. I can't say literally, I can't say these things, you know, but then like, as I'm doing them, I'm like, but I am 21 and I do talk like that. So like, it's fine. Like if I sound young, cause like I am young and that like, I know it seems like super weird, but I worried about that a lot. Like I just, I was just like trying to sound like, you know, just everybody else that I had like worked with, I guess, or everybody else that I like thought you'd probably interviewed or whatever. No, I and so now I'm just like, you know, like it's fine. Um, like I, I shouldn't sound any older than I am because like that would be weird because I'm not older than I am. And I think that I think that I'm like a pretty articulate person anyway. So it doesn't like really matter that much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just what it is with these speaking from a host perspective. When I, when I have my guests on here, as far as interviews or even movie reviews, just come on and be yourself. The higher yep. you up is how you talk. If you swear a lot, if you don't, however you are is how you come. Don't don't try to, um, and I get you want to present yourself in a certain way, but at the same time, don't try to, don't don't not be you, I guess is the best way I can say it. I can't really think yeah, of it. Yeah, absolutely. But I could definitely tell, like, you just came out of that shell from the first, especially from the first episode to the second episode. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm proud of you for it, though. I really am. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. And I know I understand you're young, 21. I get that. But it's, it's it has to be awesome to be interviewed, though, with these movies. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Like, um, just, yeah, it, it took some it took some getting used to, like, a little bit, just because I think I think what what I did that um, I think, like, how it happened, it was just kind of strange, like, for me, because um, and I didn't, like, realize that this was going to happen because you don't you don't really like I found with like fame and all this stuff like you don't ex there's nothing that happens that I'm like oh yeah I was expecting that like I, I thought that would happen you know um and so it's all like super new and so I didn't realize that like I started getting invited to come on these shows be before I had any movies out and so that was like kind of intimidating to like go on there and like be talking about my like acting career and stuff but it's like I don't really have any movies out you know it's like kind of weird to like do that but now that I like have stuff out, like I can come on here and all the hosts are like, oh, like, like the first thing, like all you guys say is like, oh yeah, you were great in this movie and like whatever movie we're talking about and stuff. And like that just like helps it a lot, just having stuff out there. Um, and like, I think that's why it was kind of like weird at the beginning, besides the fact that I like worried about all this weird stuff that I didn't need to, like just that, that, that I like didn't have movies out there. And now that I do, it's like, yeah, like I should be on the show because I have movies out there. I need to promote them and stuff like that. Um, so that's helped a lot. Like the release of Abigail like changed my life because it was the first one that um, was a feature film where I was the lead and like had a, a wide distribution. Like I'd never had that before. Mm -hmm. And so just like experiencing that gave me like a ton of confidence. Um, and then The Crumbs, like I had that again, but like Abigail was just like, it was a, it's a whole new thing. But the crumbs, they, I had that again, just like in a different way. So um, it's cool. No, it was. It was, like I said, from my perspective, just watching all three movies, I really enjoyed them, all three of them. And I got a few minutes ago, my, it was The Crumbs, as far as my favorite goes, The Crumbs, Abigail, and then 13, The 13th Cross. Mm -hmm. And like, e like I said, each, each role, you played a completely different character and you did such a great job with it. And it was Thank like... You. Every single time that you were on camera, either even if you were not saying anything at all, you did like the right. It was just, I don't know how to explain. You just did like the right thing, and it's it's cool to see somebody starting off so young in this and you know in that acting and being so well at it. Like 
having such a strong, I know you have a strong passion for it, which is another awesome thing. And I mean, these movies definitely show it. These, if you, everybody, I'm telling you, go watch 13 Cross. Well, when it comes out, 13 Cross, go watch The Crumbs and Abigail Haunting. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad you liked it. Um, as far as like my favorites go, if I was like, since you like ordered them, I thought that seemed fun and I wanted to do that too. So, um, like in terms of like, I'm not going to go off of like the experience filming them, but just like how they turned out. Um, I think Abigail is my favorite just because I really like just like serious ghost movies. Like, I think I just really like stuff like that. I like the conjuring a lot. Um, and also like where they never cut away from my character. I'm just like, that's like something that you don't get as an actor. Like that's just a, like such a rare opportunity to like get a part like that where they like never cut away from your character. Like that's crazy. And so like, I put so much, I put a lot of work into all of these, but just like seeing myself in Abigail hunting, I'm just like, Whoa, like I did, a, I put so much work into that. And so like, just as a, a performance or whatever, um, like if I was just, if somebody had never seen me act and I was just telling them to watch like one movie, I'd probably tell them to watch that one. But um, as far as like the appearance and like how I look and how the clothes are and stuff, I'd say the crumbs. I love the costumes in the crumbs. And that's very important to me, <laughs> like to like be able to wear fun stuff. Like I really did not like the clothes in Abigail hunting, but I really liked the clothes in the crumbs. And it was super cool because um, the costume designer, like when I posted something to promote the crumbs on Facebook, she like commented on it. And so I like replied to her and was like, hey, I loved working with you and I loved all the costumes. And then she's like, oh, what's your favorite costume? And I was like, well, I like the long dress and I like the um, the shiny gold skirt. And then I just get this package in the mail and she like sent me them and now I like own them. So that was super cool. Um, yeah. And the 13th Cross I love too, just because it was... Um, even though it, they came out in reverse order, um, 13th Cross was the first one that I filmed. So that was the first time I like had a lead in a feature. So um, I'll always remember that like for that. Oh, wow. That, that's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's that's cool. though. That's cool. And like and I know I know. Remember, I remember the last time you were talking, I used to do like uh, older style clothing. And yeah, I like I like the modern stuff and the old stuff. <laughs> it depends on the day. <laughs> My and I, my next question for you is: Did you keep anything off the set from this Crumbs movie? Oh yeah, of course. Um, it was remember last time when I uh, like I don't know if any of the audience people watched the last interview, but the last time I was on the show, I like went and got this like weird little squirrel made out of burlap, and I said I stole it from a set that was from the Crumbs set. <laughs> so I, was that. I remember you see when the Crumbs when I was watching the Crumbs movie. I remember the first time I seen the lab, the little lab. I remember you saying you wanted to take pictures and show pictures, but you're like, I can't because because of the movie, you know, because it's a part of the movie. It's a big part. Yeah, I actually, though, I wasn't supposed to do that, but I, as soon as they said, like, don't take any photos of this, I, like, went in there and I videotaped it and I, like, sent it to people because it's, like, I probably wouldn't have thought to do that, like, if they just were, like, here's the set. I'd be, like, oh, cool. You know, I probably, I might have taken, like, one picture or something, like, if I had time, but, like, I wouldn't have, like, snuck in there and videotaped it unless they said like this is really secretive nobody's allowed in here like they wouldn't even let like all the crew in there it was literally just like the director the actors that were in that scene and like the dp and the sound person and like everybody else it was like all curtained off and they had to like the crew had to like wait out outside it and stuff like that um and it was like like then coming into this the production the first day they'd be like yeah this is super secretive and so i was like oh i gotta videotape it and so i videotaped it um but that place was so cool like how how like it's all lit up and all like the bubbly like little containers and stuff like it literally had like switches and you could go in and like switch it all on and it would all just like come come on it was really cool like to see that <laughs> yeah it was it was cool though the like, the little the lab scene that when they when they showed all the stuff in there I was like oh, this is kind of cool I was, this is pretty cool yeah I remember you like I said I remember the last episode how you were talking about it and you're like I can't really say too much and I can't I have a video but I can't show you the video because <laughs> Which I understand, but um, what was I gonna say? This move, this oh, I'm trying to think of how I could say something without spoiling, without spoiling the movie. Well, it is out, so we don't have to be like too careful, but we just don't want to ruin the the big plot. Because <laughs> yeah, people, yeah, I like okay. There was there was a scene towards um towards the end 
with the, the motorcycle guy mm-hmm. and how your it was you and the, the lady who, the woman who played your mother kind of like fell not fell in love with him but like had like a feeling for him like yeah you know, he's a good guy he's a good person mm-hmm. and I, I thought that was kind of cool because throughout the whole movie you never really you seen it kind of very 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 slowly and very small with you mainly and leonard but you didn't see it too much until like that scene really and i was just like oh wow they're you know they're they're maybe they're gonna be nice but nice people yeah maybe <laughs> and then you know you know how it ends but <laughs> but still I, th- I thought that was kind of cool and the with the um with the four kids that came at one point yeah I honestly thought we would see them again, mm-hmm. just because of just because of their interaction with the with the motorcycle guy at the store. Just yeah. that little two second interaction, that right there was like okay, because he was asking about where you guys stayed at, because you know the, the was like a not a cottage, not a cabin, like a like a it's a bed and breakfast. You. That's what I was getting at. Like a I had a bed and breakfast. I remember him asking about it, and they told him. And I was like, okay, but we might see them again, but that didn't, yeah. didn't see them. <laughs> that- yeah, that, that was what was fun about filming that. Um, one of my favorite things about it was just like, I'd never worked with so many like different day players. There were literally like different day players every day. And like, we had our main like core group of cast. It was like me and um, Maria Olson, Jeff Hatch and Anton Clark were there like every day. And the crew was obviously there every day, but like every day there'd be different people that would come in and be like the guests. Um, And that was really fun to just meet a bunch of like people and just like hang out with them for like one day and then they'd leave. (laughs) And then like, and it was, um, they cast it out of LA. Um, But we were filming up in like Northern California. And so they would, the day players would come and they'd like do their scenes and stuff and we'd hang out with them. And then they'd like, stay overnight like in northern california and then like leave in the morning and so it was kind of it was kind of like running a bed and breakfast because um we actually stayed like we filmed it at a real bed and breakfast and then the actors the main actors were staying like we stayed in these little cabins that were like kind of just off the property of the bed and breakfast you had to go up these little hiking trails to get to them um, and then we'd like have people come in and do their scenes and then they leave in the morning and new people would come and it was like, and, but we always like had our core group of cast there. Um, and so it was like, it's kind of like real. <laughs> it's like, this is our, this is our territory. And I think it's, I think it was really funny because, um, obviously as the, the main cast, we have these little things that we would do, like, um, my like club foot in the movie and, Um, how we'd switch our accents back and forth based on like you know who was in there and um, just all these like little things and how we would look at people all creepy and stuff and this is all stuff that we figured out with the director um, prior to coming on the set and like most of these things weren't even really written in the script it was just all like just stuff that we'd invented for our characters um, and so I thought it was really funny because every day new day players would come in and we'd have this whole thing going on where I'd like limp over and just, we'd all just look at him super weird and we'd be switching our accents. And I feel like every day player was like, what production <laughs> like, did I just walk into? Um, cause we'd all act like so weird and do all these things that weren't necessarily in the script. And we didn't really need to clue them in because like they're there for like a couple scenes or whatever. So we didn't really need to be like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this. We just like, okay, we'll do our scene. And then we'd like do our scene. And the four of us would just have all these like weird things that we'd already like planned out. And they're just like, like, why are they, why do they have two accents? And why is she limping? And like, then I come out with like the porcelain doll and they're just like, what? Like we we just confuse people every day. And um, the day players would like multiple day players came over to me. Um, Cause in the film, I like, I look at people like really creepily with this creepy look on my face and, a lot of the day players would come over and be like, you're going to give me nightmares. Like, why are you looking at me like that? <laughs> and stuff. Um, but it was, it was fun to like meet them and stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. And what you just said, like how you were looking at when the new people came, how you were looking when they came to the bed and breakfast, how you and your family were looking at them was just, it was always funny. Yeah. It'd be, it'd be like welcoming slash creepy. Mm-hmm. Like, again, That's what we're going for. <laughs> and I like how, 
do you have a reservation? Oh, it, it's fine. They just can't. They just someone just canceled. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> they just canceled again. But yeah, I really did it. Like I said, though, I really, I really, really did enjoy this movie. I'm definitely gonna watch it again and probably do a review on on this podcast with one of my. Yeah, cool. Because it was it was definitely a fun movie, and I like what um I like what Craig does. I watched what was the other movie he did? The Evil Down the Street. Thank you. That I like his. I like what he does. Him and what him and David do. Yeah. Use on things. They was now was Craig in this movie? Craig and David. Yeah, David was the was the investigator, private right? investigator, and Craig. And Craig was the homeless guy. Okay. Yes, because my wife, that, she was like, "Is that Craig?" Like looking in the at one part. Yeah. Would you see? Yeah, that, it was it was funny because Craig, like the first time you see him in the movie, I think, um, is. There's some other actors that are doing a scene at the like convenience store, and then he's just like laying in the back like a bum, mm-hmm. and it was super funny because like I was watching it with my friends, and um they just like noticed him there, and they're just like, hey, look at that bum just laying in the back, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's the producer, and they're like, really? <laughs> but yeah, the the bum is the producer. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's funny. Oh, that's awesome. I like how they pu- I like how they put themselves in the movies too. Craig always gives himself like kind of a smaller scene so to speak but yeah i do like i think i think david and i mean i could be wrong but it's i think that this is what they said i think that david wanted craig to be benjamin crumb who's the lead of the film um and craig was like no (laughs) i'm not gonna be benjamin crumb um but so he ended up being like the the homeless guy who witnesses us doing creepy stuff but um i think that's super funny because like jeff just like embodied that role like so well and just like came up a lot of the stuff that the whole family like did in the movie was like jeff's idea um and stuff and like i can't picture somebody else being that that character and especially like the producer who like you know ultimately cast me (laughs) like it just like seems really funny um to think of him like as benjamin crumb (laughs) Yeah, no, I get it. And yeah, the guy, he said his name is Jeff. He did an excellent job as the doctor. Like, everybody's role fit them perfect. Like, when you mm-hmm. watch a movie and you're kind of visualizing that character as you're watching the movie, it kind of, it just like, it just fits for how they, everyone acted in it, which I thought was pretty awesome. Like, with yeah. Leonard, he's strong as hell. He seems like he's not the brightest. And I don't mean that to be like mean, but he doesn't seem like he's the brightest, but he has like a huge, huge heart. And he really cares about your, he has a huge heart he really cares about your character mm-hmm. and like if i've noticed like if any anybody just breathes on you wrong he's ready to just go just go <laughs> <off>. yeah <laughs> like out of out of everybody i felt like he was the most protective over you out of everybody in the whole in the whole movie he was definitely the most protective over you yeah for sure <laughs> which i thought was pretty cool and then his jealous side was just nuts i was like oh mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah uh we were doing the scene where um one of the day players comes in and he like throws him against the window that was like that was real because they rehearsed that for like half an hour um like and showed them all this like combat like screen combat and stuff and there was a ton of choreography to like this is you know where to put like who does what and this is where to put your hand and like tons of choreography and stuff to like obviously fake throwing a guy against the window because you know you're not really going to do that um and so they like rehearsed it a lot it was literally like half an hour and they're like showing them okay this is exactly what to do so like nobody gets hurt but it looks real and stuff and then Anton is a method actor and he like he gets so into it Anton played Leonard um and so like he just like came in on action and like he seemed to like forget all the choreography because he like he literally like took the guy and like threw him at the window and I was just like like what um, and I'm glad I was out of frame because I was like I was like I reacted like very like ah because like, it was scary to like see that um but like I'm just I'm glad Anton is awesome like he's he's a really really great great natural actor um you know nice guy and everything but like he does get really really into it mm-hmm. and like I, I'm glad that my character was somebody that he like loved and like wanted to protect and stuff rather than like had like had a fight scene or something with him because the people that <laughs> that had the like 
combat with him like it was like scary to watch because like he would just it was just so real he'd like like he literally like threw the guy at the window and i was like oh my gosh so yeah that was scary <laughs> i i thought it was fun like i i just loved his character too though just cause... yeah he's he's everybody's favorite character it's it's super funny because i feel like fans talk to actors like not how they'd like talk to just like Mm. other people or whatever it's kind of funny i feel like i feel like they forget that we're like actual people and stuff because they say like weird stuff and so um somebody like approached me about the crumbs and was like they said something like oh my gosh um i love the crumbs i'm like thank you and they're like next to leonard victoria is my favorite <laughs> i just think that's like super funny because like um if you had a bunch of like cousins or something you wouldn't be like next to this cousin you're my favorite like it's just like such a weird thing to say like next next to this character you're my favorite character <laughs> but yeah I, I just think it's funny like what they say but um yeah leonard is a very likable character and i think it's funny because like obviously he isn't you know a, a good person like the the character like he does really evil things but just the way that anton played the role it was like it's just very likable somehow and i think that's kind of what that's that's where the magic lies in this movie is just like somehow we were able to like make this family likable even though we're serial killers and like that just it just makes a fun halloween movie <laughs> because it's like usually you're not rooting for the killers but in this one like you are you know um, so that's fun. And I think I'm, I'm glad that it came out like a week before Halloween. I think that was like perfect timing for the release. And I've actually heard several people say that they're going to make it a tradition and like watch it every Halloween. And I think that's just like, I'm just honored to be a part of like people's new Halloween tradition and stuff. Like that's super cool. Like I hope they do watch it every year. No, they, they, people definitely, people definitely will. People definitely will. And like, I think a big reason why a lot of people do like Leonard's character and your character too is because you two showed like the most passion out of everything that you guys are doing. You guys showed the most emotion. So people can kind of maybe not relate to what you guys were doing in the movie, so to speak, but yeah. at least the, the personal part of it. Like when you guys, you know, the caring for each other and caring for other people, stuff yeah. like that, people can kind of relate to that. And then him mm -hmm. being like, he has like that switch. He's like, you could say he's a general giant for you, but for everybody else, <laughs> Not so much. It's like you turn yeah. it. <laughs> no, he's gonna go. Mm. And I just, I just thought that was awesome. I really did. I like the connection between you guys. I actually like the connection between the whole family. Like it was back and forth. Every relationship was really, really different. The father did get really weird at one part in the movie, though, and I'm just like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was just like, <laughs> the father did get really weird. Yeah. And again, like I. I'll I'll do when I do my review for the movies. When I do my spoilers, I don't want to spoil it because I want I really want people to go check this movie out for themselves and watch it. Mm -hmm. Enjoy some fun stuff and funny stuff. But I was just like, really, man? Like, come on! <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, because of where like you guys were like in you know in the bed and breakfast, but it was like out in you know out in the country or whatever, not you know in the middle of nowhere. I'm not saying that it's something that's. It's something that you not not understand, so to speak, but you're not surprised with that. I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. With that, I'm just like I'm not. I was like I'm not surprised. I didn't want to assume that watching it, but I'm not surprised. But I'm just like, come on, man! You just let you just like went right out there for it, and hey. <laughs> yeah, it's really interesting because um, there there actually is a true story that happened in like the 1800s that's like really similar to the crumbs. Like obviously, it's not the whole like you know incest and the like life serum and all these like things that are totally off the wall that are in the movie but there actually was like a family called the bender family um that did like they they were basically the crumbs they had like the parents and the the daughter that they would use as like you know bait and stuff like that just like victoria was and um they would like they would lure people into their bed and breakfast and like kill them and they were like cannibals and stuff like that and there's like, there's so many parallels because I was like researching that family um, online when I found out they like existed and there's so many parallels to them and the Crumb family. Um, so I think that's like super creepy that there like actually is people or there were people that like uh, were basically the crumbs without the whole like 
fantasy part of it, like the life serum and all that stuff, like um, there was like a more realistic version of the Crumb family. <laughs> so like, that's really creepy. <laughs> now the, the life serum was, that was to meet, so you, so you wouldn't get sick and you would stay, like if you did, I remember him discussing it. If you did it at a certain age, say you did it at 25 years old, you would always look 25. Mm-hmm. And you'd always be healthy. You wouldn't get sick. Or if you did it at 80 years old, your body would be younger, but your physical features would still be 80 years old. Yeah. I get, now that part I understood. And then you also needed a kidney transplant in the movie. Mm-hmm. Which I... There, okay, so there was a part. It was with the vegans. And with that part, I remember... Well, now, was it the people before the vegans? Yes, it was the people. I think it was the people before the vegans. Your mother. I don't. Rem- I don't remember what order they were in, like at all. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Okay, so your mother stabbed somebody in the neck, and the father was like, "You know, you should have waited for me to insert or whatever to do a transfusion first. And I thought he was mad about that. So with the vegans, when he gave his wife, your mother, the the serum from the vegan, I thought that he did something to it. Or that that person was unhealthy and he was trying to do something to her because he was he was mad, you know, a couple scenes I've seen before. And I was just like, oh, I was like, wait a minute. Because you came in, you were like, she was like, what about, you know, what about Victoria? And you were like, I, I already took the serum. But I thought you guys were kind of in on that part, just for that part. I was wrong, but that kind of, I like that. It kind of threw me off. But I did like that about it too. I was like, oh, wow, I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Because I was I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Because I remember the guy went outside and he was smoking, and I remember mm-hmm. your father was like figures, and then he just like walks away and he's like gone, and then you know the guy follows him, and well you know what happens after that, and if you don't viewers you gotta you gotta go watch the Crumbs movie and check it out, definitely. <laughs> did you have a favorite um Did you have a favorite scene in this movie that you shot? yourself in the, in the crumbs yes um hmm, that's a good question i i really like the scene where um i come i like kind of burst into the crumb laboratory and and tell tell the father that i don't want a certain guest to be used as a victim mm-hmm. uh, i really like that scene um just because there was a lot of like movement and it kind of kind of showed a it showed the like kind of human side of my character. Um, so that was fun. And I liked um, my favorite scene for a while was the, the one where I'm like, it's just like an emotional kind of back and forth with Leonard about my like kidney failure and stuff like that. And I liked that because that was my audition scene. So that was like the scene that I used to get in the movie. So like just being there in the costume and like doing it for real was like super cool. Um, and the director actually like cried after I did the scene. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I did it right. Um, so that was fun. And um, just, just, I guess my favorite scenes in it were the ones where I got to talk a lot back, back and forth with my British accent it was fun. Um, Cause I love, I love dialogue and like, I think the most magical kind of dialogue is just when you have like two actors and you can just like go back and forth and stuff. And it's just fun to do the accent and stuff like that. But there's there's definitely a lot of fun scenes in it. I liked being able to say, "Do you have a reservation?" Because I mean, that's that's the tagline now. <laughs> I, I knew it would be. <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, I get to say that." Um, it was funny because I was on this other show recently, and uh, it was like live, and they were having people comment in like questions to me, and they're like, "Do you have any questions for her?" And this one person's like, "Yeah, I have a question." do you have a reservation <laughs> and stuff like that? And it's just like, it's cool to be a part of something that's like being quoted and stuff like that. It's like, it's really cool. And people, people are saying that it's going to be like a cult classic and stuff like that. And I'm like, that would be super cool if it was one. <laughs> I could see, I could really see that. I, I really can see that. It's one of those ones where people have to kind of watch it a few times, get used to it. But I can see it being one of those movies where <laughs> again, like you're saying, even if it's just like on Halloween, I was honestly thinking more Thanksgiving just because of you guys are eating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like that. I watched it on Halloween and Thanksgiving. <laughs> but, um, and we need a Thanksgiving horror movie. Then this could work. <laughs> yeah. It's all about family and togetherness, right? <laughs> 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 but, um, yeah, like I, I could see that though. I could see that being the tagline. You, you, 
you have any reservations? Okay, well. <laughs> but yeah, this, this is a fun one. Do you have anything in store for us coming up? Right. Yeah, I I just wrapped a movie and I've said I think it's supposed to be like a secret and I did like tell a lot of people so I pro- I'm not I'm going to stop there and not tell any more people. Um but I can say this one if just in terms of like the experience filming it, this recent one was my favorite film that I have done. Um it was super fun. Um, and it's a it's an action adventure movie and I got to do my own stunts in it. So that was like just really different um, and it has it's is dramatic and stuff, but it has a lot of comedic relief in it. And it has a totally off the wall plot line that would like never happen. And so it was it was super fun to just like be in something that it really just was like when you're a little kid. And you like picture yourself going on like a big epic adventure like that's what this movie is it's like you know i've done a lot of these like dark r-rated gritty you know super scary films and like those are those are awesome and cool and i'm glad that i am in them and there'll be more of that in the future i'm sure but uh, it was really fun to just do this one where it's like just a fun epic adventure movie rated pg-13 you know just like just have fun and do all this crazy stuff and i got to learn how to shoot a rifle i shot a 6.5 creedmoor rifle which is humongous and i couldn't freaking lift that thing like at all um and so i'd like i'd just like kind of look around if nobody was looking i'd like kind of set it down and then they would have these gun safety people on set like no the barrel can't touch the ground and so i'd like put it back up and then just it would just like lower down just like you know casually and then the gun the gun safety people were always watching and then as soon as the barrel would like hit the ground no <laughs> i'd like to put it back up oh man that thing was heavy and it was we shot it in the uinta mountains in utah um and it was like it got down to like 20 degrees one of the nights and it, i'm just like holding this like gun it was so cold but you know i'm, I'm making it sound like it wasn't fun but it, overall it was so fun and i also got to learn how to sh- uh, ride a giant like four-wheeler it was like super big and um just like yeah it was it was a fun one so i can't say what that is but um i'm excited for you guys to see it because i think i think that'll do really well because it's it's great (laughs) it's it's awesome that's cool and that's something else which i'm glad you did say that and i know how you said it's it's non-horror because since the last time you and i have talked i started i'm working on still but me and a couple friends started like a creators network and on that network it's other like other creators like myself, podcasters and all that. And it's called the Z network. And we actually have a, po- another show on there called popcorn and pints, which is like this, but it's non horror. So it's non horror movies, non horror shows. So once that movie does come out and we get to watch it, you'll have another place where you can come for like non horror stuff for interviews and all that. Yeah. Um, that'd be awesome. Cause I think you're an awesome guest for one. Do you, this is your third time on here. And I would love to have you on here again, definitely either this one or again, the other show. But now I'm I'm just like I might just turn it because it's it's gonna for me it's gonna be weird seeing you in something that's like non horror and like I'm I'm excited to get that out there because it's like I love doing horror but it's kind of like it wasn't my choice really to do like all horror it was just like you know I'm like when I was 15 and decided to try to get into film it was like I'd try for everything every genre and it, it was just you know the first directors that wanted to give me a chance happened to be horror directors and then those movies came out and everybody's like oh you're the scream queen and stuff and I'm like that's great like I like that title you know like I want to do I love doing horror it's fun but like I don't want to just do that like I want to do like other things too um and this one that I just did it was just so fun to do something like more tame and so like I want more of that in the future and so, like, when that comes out, that'll be good to have, like, you know, if I want to get in a horror movie, I can be, like, look at Abigail. Or if it's, like, if I want to get in something more tame, I can, like, show them that. <laughs> so that'll be good to have that, like, diversity. And um, it really is just, like, just uh, the my character, her name's Kira, and she just, it's it takes place over one night. And just the huge, just, like, dreamlike adventure that she has over this like one night um is just such a fun it's gonna be like super fun to watch and just like the experience filming that it 
it was like an equal like epic adventure it was like every single day there would be like just crazy stuff that happened because like first of all um since it's sh- it's set at night it happens over one night um and so that's like we needed a lot of hours working where it was like dark outside um and so we actually had to everybody working on the film had to flip around their like schedule and we had to work from 7 p.m to 7 a.m and then we'd like sleep in the day and like that was like really weird um but yet like just being up all night like with all these people that you like get to know super well because you're on set with them um just like so much crazy stuff happened (laughs) on that set it was just like every day or every night was like a huge adventure um so it was it was cool i'm glad i got to do it um yeah and i'm excited for it to come out it's got aliens in it and stuff so (laughs) i think it'll i think it'll do well that's awesome though. that's awesome i I can't wait to see it and I, i love your excitement for every movie that you've told me about that you're in or going to be in you were all you always have this excitement for it like like i guess the best way i can describe it is like a kid on christmas when you have that one <laughs> toy that one present you asked for and you don't think you're going to get it but you actually get it when you open it up and your eyes <laughs> yeah. get up. It, it, it's kind of it's kind of like that especially with this with this latest one because like 13th grass crumbs and abigail i hated filming all of them like it, they had their good moments but like overall like just you know based on like First of all, the people that were there, I'm just going to say that the people that were there and just like the times in my life that they like happened and all that stuff, like every one of these three, it, they've, it's great and fun and exciting to have them come out and have people see them. And like, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm getting back all the like fun that I lost like now, because it is like super exciting to have them come out and be interviewed about it and all this stuff. But like filming them, none of them were fun. I didn't like filming any of them. And so it was like, but I know that I love acting because I always have loved acting. And um, so I kept thinking like one day there's going to be, you know, I'm going to be the lead in a feature film and it's going to be really fun. And I kept like waiting for that to happen. And I was kind of like getting really freaked out because I'm like, uh oh, (laughs) like I've done three feature films and I didn't like them. And that's like, that's bad. You know, like, am I like, you know, going into the wrong career. And it's like, uh, it's like, it was like freaking me out. Cause it was like my whole like lifelong dream like happened. And like, it, it wasn't fun, like times three. And I'm like, Oh shoot. Like, am I going into the, the right thing? Um, and then when I did this one, it was like, Oh, okay. Yeah, it is fun. I do love it. Um, those were just weird phenomenons, all of them, because they, I'm just going to say like a lot of the people that worked on these were like like, super strange. And also just like, they all came at like kind of the wrong time, like in my personal life Mm -hmm. um, to like handle them. But like, I feel like, okay, this is what's cool. So I found this like journal type thing that I made when I was like 12 and I wrote like my dreams and stuff in it. And it had little places to write, like what's going to happen in your future. And I wrote, I didn't even really remember this, but I had written that like I'm going to get a part in a movie and all this stuff in the year 2021 when I'm 22. And that was like this magical like dream or whatever. And I totally forgot about that. And then so when I did these three films and I'm like, oh, no, I, I, I kind of felt like I missed out on my like childhood dream because they weren't as fun as I thought they'd be. Um, and then but recently I found that thing and I saw that and I was like like I'm 21 and it's 2020. So like that, like dream that I'd written, but that hasn't even happened yet, you know? And so I feel like these three films were like, it's okay that they weren't fun because it's like, they've elevated my career like so much. And so it's like doing them got me to like the point where I'm able to like do that dream next year. And so I feel like now I'm finally ready to like have fun with it and stuff. Um, Cause this last one was fun. And so like, it just like everything like worked out. And I thought that was super cool to like find that journal because then now I don't feel like I missed out on, you know, my dream or whatever, because it's like, you know, according to my like magical journal, like that dream isn't even going to happen until 2021, which is like next year. So like, it's like, I didn't miss out because it hasn't even like happened yet. But like I had to do these movies because I wouldn't like get all these cool parts if I didn't do them because you know, like now people see me and that's why they, that's why I'm in these things. So it, it like worked out. So now I'm like, okay, I didn't miss out, but yeah, it was just anyway, back to the original. Um, what I was saying was 
Um, I'm just glad this recent one was fun because I got freaked out when the first three weren't fun. <laughs> I was like, oh no, but now it's fun. So it's all good. <laughs> no, that's cool though. And I, I like that you said that because I've talked to other like actors and actresses and they'll say like certain movies just, it wasn't fun to do it. Or they'll talk about like the hard work you have to do to actually be in these movies. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the movie looks great, crisp, beautiful, pretty, but the back, you know, as far as making it might not be all that great. But I like how you're saying how with these three movies, you didn't necessarily like, you know, when you had to, to when you're acting in them, not to say mm-hmm. you didn't like the movies, but as far as, you know, working up on them. Mm-hmm. And you did, but th- that didn't make you quit. Like a lot of people, I've talked to other, again, I've talked to other actors and actresses, they'll say like some people will be in one movie and they it was maybe more work than they thought it would be or not as fun as they thought it would be, so to speak. And they, that was it for them. They just did whatever one and done. And you, you're like, okay, so I had three movies. Yeah, like, I mean, I knew I knew that I, I loved it because I've been acting since I was 11. It was just, like, mm-hmm. mostly plays and, like, short films and other stuff. And I, like, I did see that there was, like, magic in that. And I did love it. It was just, like, when I got to these, like, okay, now I'm, like, the lead in the feature films, you know, which is kind of the top of the line. It, like, the, they weren't fun. But I was, like... I know that I love acting. I know that it like would be magical if I got in the right movie with the right people um, who like, I feel like a lot of people on these ones, like were kind of judgy and that's like my biggest fear is like people that are judgy. And so like, that's why I kind of like, that's one reason I didn't like them because I was like, Oh no. Um, So I was, I I kept kind of looking for, okay, like if I get in the right movie at the right time with people who aren't judgy, you know, I know that I would love it. I know, like, I know it would be a huge epic adventure. And then I finally, like, got in the, that right movie, and I'm like, okay, yeah, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so um, it's good. Do you think more, as far as the judginess, do you think it was more of, a, like, a confidence thing for you and, like, a, um, more of, like, because the genre of the movie, I know horror is not your favorite genre, so to speak, so do you think it was more of that, like, the genre? Well, it is, it is, it is definitely one of my favorite genres. I just, like, didn't want to, I don't want to do all of it, all of horror, but I, I really like the genre. It's one of my favorites. Um, I think it is, it was a confidence thing as well, but um, I honestly just think that these people that I worked on uh, my most recent film were just, they're just not judgy people. And the other people were um, because like a lot of scenarios that happened on this, these first three, like they just wouldn't happen like with this, with this new group of people. Um, so yeah, no, I, I get it though. It, it, it happens though, but I'm, I'm, again, I'm happy that you stuck with it. Cause again, there's a yeah. lot of people that do what you've done as far as those, say they did three films and they just, for whatever reason, they had bad experiences or just didn't have as much fun as they thought they would, or they wanted to. And they're just like, maybe this isn't for me. And you're just like, I love acting so much. I'm going to, and then I'm, I'm, and I'm also happy that with this next movie, you got something that you really 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 enjoyed to do so that i can't wait to see how you acted in this movie though like because with yeah. those movies you're saying how you it's, act, it's different for sure like it's it's just it's funny like <laughs> it's like super funny um and it's it was like kind of interesting though because my co-actor in it um who is like the lead male character he uh he's very like improvising kind of actor and I'm not I am like these are the lines and we're gonna say the lines and I I know it like I mean like exactly verbatim the script because like that's just how I am I'm a word person Mm -hmm. um and so like I think everything that you add your personal touches and stuff aren't extra words they're extra like expressions and just like little things that you do but I am like I want to stick to the script and this co-star was like he didn't script to stick to the script at all <laughs> he just like would add stuff and so he was he was awesome like i loved working with him he was just like perfect gentleman the whole time um just like and just like talent was like totally off the charts um he's he was awesome but at the same time i'm just like are you done like <laughs> he would like be talking and i'm like are you done like i don't know when to say my line because like, because he wouldn't even like say anything that was in the script. He'd just be like, da, 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 da. and it was, it was brilliant. Like it was, it was great. And I was like watching a movie every time he like steps onto the screen, but like, I'm just like trying to do my scene and I'd say my line. And then he'd just like ramble about other stuff. And I'm like, are you done? Like, like the whole, the whole time I was like, is he done? Like, when do I say my line? Um, 
so that was that was kind of interesting <laughs> but I did really I did really like working with him a lot um so that was cool but um even the director like was like commenting about that because uh, he'd he'd worked with that other actor before and then I come to the set the first day and like that actor wasn't supposed to come till like later and so I did uh, my scenes the first day and then the director like came over to me at the end of the day and was just like I'm I'm this is gonna be an interesting shoot and I'm like why and he's like well you are like the most like verbatim actor I've ever worked with and this guy is like he improvs a lot <laughs> and he was like telling me like it's gonna be like weird having you guys together um, but yeah, that was funny. Would you ever do improv acting more though, or? Uh, I mean, like I, I do it if they ask me to. Like, I mean, I've been on set where they're like, "Okay, I don't want you to stick to the script for this scene. I want you to like improvise it." And like then, of course, like yeah, I'll do that. But if like I wouldn't, I wouldn't like try out for a movie where they say they like want to improv it, like because I just don't like doing that. I'm like, I think the magic of acting is like taking somebody else's words and you know making them come to life and you know breathing life into them um and i really like to just stick to what's written um and stuff like that and so like i wouldn't necessarily sign on to a movie where they they said like it's gonna all be that or whatever i probably wouldn't but just in a normal like movie set if they say like, oh, can you like go off the script and improv here? I'm like, okay, like I can do it, but it's just like, why do we have to do that? Like, what's the point of having a script if we're gonna improv it? <laughs> so, but yeah, it was really funny though, cause there's there's one line in the new movie where, um, like, so we're we're having this adventure and stuff, and I'm trying to make like a booby trap for the alien, and um, uh, Travis's character, the the guy that I was talking about, um, he says like it's kind of a it's kind of a funny movie because it's like it is really dramatic most of the time and like life and death situations and then we just like just kind of drop it and just like be funny and then like go back there's a lot of like comedic relief in between the like super dramatic we're just like dramatic dramatic and then it's just like something something and we just like make a joke and then we go back to it it's like i've never done that kind of acting before but anyway so i'm making this booby trap and we're trying to run from the alien and there's all this stuff going on and then uh, we just kind of stop and, and his character goes, this, you know, this is like Jaws. Have you seen Jaws? And then I just go, no, I've seen it. This is nothing like Jaws. And the scene's just supposed to end there. But it was it was like so funny because he said that line and then I said my line and then he just like, he keeps going because that's what he does. So he just goes, huh? And it, I was laughing so hard because it was three in the morning when we filmed that. And I was just like <laughs> laughing because it was like, I was like, this is like Jaws. Have you seen that? And I'm like, no, this is nothing like Jaws. Huh? <laughs> like, I just wasn't expecting that at all. And so I'm just like laughing. And then they're like, then I had to do it again because I was laughing. And then so um, he wasn't supposed to say anything at the end. That's why it was funny. And so then we do it again. And he's like, uh, this is like Jaws. Have you seen that? And I'm like, no, this is nothing like Jaws. And he just goes, okay. And so I told him like, it's three in the morning. Like if you say anything at the end, it's going to be funny. And he's like, Oh, okay. I won't say anything. <laughs> it was so funny. I like, I kept bringing that up. Oh, that's awesome. That's another, one other funny thing that happened on that set that I like always think about was I, we were working on this like really long emotional, like crying scene for like two hours. And so we did it. And then um, I was kind of in like a weird, like emotional state afterward. Cause I'd been working on the scene for like two hours. And then, we broke for like they call it lunch because technically they still have to feed us lunch like six hours like into the day even if it's overnight but it was like our like lunch was like at one in the morning which was like really weird but um so we we had that like food break or whatever at, like one in the morning after we'd been doing this emotional scene for two hours um and so I'm just kind of in this like weird emotional state and then I go around the corner to like where, where the food is and it had been catered and everybody had like requested a type of food and they had it in like little boxes, but they got every single person's name wrong. <laughs> so like, like every person and like, um, the producer's name was JR and, um, they wrote Kyle like on the box and like, there was a guy named like Derek or something. And it said Garrett. And like, my name said Kelvy, like K E L V I E. 
and like there was just every person was like super funny and the director's name is rob and so i said like bob and just um literally every single person had like the name wrong on the box and since i had just done this like emotional scene for two hours i was just like laughing like so hard at like these like boxes it was so funny i was just like oh my gosh like all the names were just like different names you sound like you had a lot of fun on that set for this movie yeah, it was fun. And the, the first AD would like help me prank the director, which was fun because most first ADs would not go for that. And he did. And I was like, good job. Like you're, you're my kind of first AD. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy for you that you had so much fun on this. And I, I really can't wait to see this next movie. Cause it's just so far, like I said, for, for myself and my wife, you're three for three with us. Cool. Thanks. Oh, man, I'm not, <laughs> I, I'm sure that you'll be four for four just because just your acting alone is it's it's great. And I, again, I like how each movie, the three movies that I did see three different characters and you're three different people in these three movies. Because there's some actors, there's bigger name actors that I've seen where I'm going to tell you right off the bat. It's an actor I cannot stand. Nicolas Cage. He's been in hundreds of movies. And I feel like he's the same freaking character in every single movie. You don't have that curse, and I'm happy you don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy you don't. But yeah, this was this this crumbs movie though. People go out. Amazon, it's on Amazon Prime. Yep. Down. It's on Amazon Prime, and it's on Amazon UK. So if you're in the UK, you can still get it. Even better. Even better. But this this movie was definitely worth watching. And Thirteen Cross, when that comes out, you got to go see that. Definitely go see Abigail Haunting as well because that was awesome. That's also on Amazon Prime. Yeah. All, all three movies were great. Again, great. And I can't wait to see the fourth one. I cannot mm-hmm. wait to see the fourth one. Yeah. <laughs> just because just because of your excitement talking about it makes me want to be like, oh, I wish this movie was out now. Just yeah. Send me I, a screen. I just want I just want to say one other like super funny like oh, story course. about that because it is so funny. So um. <laughs> So like we were filming up in the Uintas and um, so I had like a really big trailer like every day, which was super nice. But um, one of the locations, they wouldn't let you like bring the trailers like up there. There was like a sign that said like, don't bring trailers up here. And so we couldn't bring it, Um, but it was like super cold. And so I was just hanging out with like the first assistant director and the makeup person. And then one of my co-stars like in somebody's car because it was like super cold. Um, and I was called to the set. And so the, the first assistant director like walked me out to the set and then they like didn't seem to be needing me because they were like doing something with the camera or something. Um, and so we wanted to like go back and hang out in the car. <laughs> and so um, the, the assistant director like pretended like I needed a makeup change. Um, and so we just were like, yeah, she needs a makeup change and stuff. And it was super funny. And then um, he's just like, can I send Chelsea back to makeup? And then nobody answered. And he's just like, I'm going to send Chelsea back to makeup. And then we just like walked in and like got in the car and we were just like laughing like uncontrollably. Like, and this is like the assistant director. And it's like, it was, I've never like had an experience like with the assistant director that was just like all loopy. It was super funny. Maybe it was because the late hour, I don't know. But um, we got in the car and they're like, what? Like, what's funny? And so I was just like, I need a makeup change. And then the makeup artist was in the car. And so she was like super worried. She's like, what? And I was like, no, not really. Like we're just messing around and stuff. Cause that was like our excuse to not be at the set. Mm-hmm. And then, um, then I got called to set again. And so he walked me out there and I did the scene. And then um, the director just like looked at me with these like twinkling like eyes and just goes, okay, now you can get your other makeup on. But like he was referencing something that I had said earlier, but we thought that he was like onto us and knew that I didn't really have a makeup change. And so I was just like, what? And then he like explained why he said that. And we're like, oh, and then we walked back to the car and then we were just like laughing uncontrollably. And my co-star was just like, oh, here come the giggle twins. And we just like got in the car and it was like, it was super funny. See, that's all. I like stories like that. Where you, I like when you hear the, the fun stories behind the yeah. scenes and all that. What was weird, though, about it was, like, we shot it in September, which, like, obviously, we're in the middle of the pandemic. And so all the crew had to wear masks, and I, like, couldn't tell them apart. Like, because there's so many crew people, and they all had, like, brown hair. And I'm just like, I don't know, like, who they are. Um, and, like, like one, one dude, um, 
because it was like super dark and I was walking back to my trailer one day and I was like oh my gosh it's like so dark and a crew person came and like gave me their flashlight and I wanted to give it back to them the next day but like I didn't know who, who it was that like gave me a flashlight I was like I have no idea and I was like walking around and I'm like there was some kind of grip or somebody that gave me a flashlight and then it took me so long to figure out who it was and then the director who like you you get very like you get to know your director really, really well. They come, they become extremely familiar to you after like a couple of days because you're with them all the time. Um, we were like on our like midnight snack break or whatever, and he like took off his mask and his like hat because he always had like a hat on. And I didn't know who it was. I was like, "Who's that guy?" And it was the director. And this is like two weeks into the shoot, and I'm just like, it was like it was weird like to have everybody wear a mask. <laughs> I was like different. I never, and because I that was the only like thing that I worked on during the pandemic. And because I've been kind of taking a break from acting until then. So um, that was the first movie that I did like in the pandemic. And it was like weird to have everybody have a mask on. <laughs> that that has to be very, very, very different. Like for me, I've been working from home since July now. Yeah. But just just with movies and act, because I know you have to have a crew. I know there has to be X amount of people there and all that stuff. So it has to be, yeah. it has to be different. It has to be different. Yeah, it is different. Like, especially the first day when you, like, meet everybody. Um, like, somebody, they'd all come over and, like, say their names or whatever. But I'm, like, I have no idea, like, who's who. Because they all have, like, either, like, brown hair or, like, blonde hair. And they'll have a mask on. And, like, I couldn't tell the DP apart from his, the DP is the cinematographer. I couldn't tell him apart from his, like, assistant camera person. Um, and they, like, came over and I'm, like, I don't know. And it, it took me like a few days to be like, okay, like these are the people. And then, then I did get used to them and then they'd like take off the mask and I'm like, who's this person? So it was like, it was different, <laughs> but it was kind of funny. Cause like the actors were the only people that didn't have to wear the mask because obviously like we can't really have it on and we have to go through makeup and all the stuff and we can't like mess up the makeup. And so we just like didn't wear one. Um, a couple of them like did, but I kind of got out of it, but um, like, we didn't really wear one and so it's kind of funny too to like they all know what we look like but we don't really know what they look like i feel like at the premiere i'm gonna like run into them and be like wait who's this person and it's gonna be like somebody that i knew <laughs> like i worked with you for three weeks chelsea how do you not remember me yeah <laughs> put your mask back on oh okay now i know yeah. yeah they're gonna have to be like because a lot of the crew people like wear hats too they were like they all had hats that said like Utah Film Commission on it because we like filmed in Utah and stuff. Um, and so a lot of them like wore the Utah Film Commission hats. And so like that covers up like this much of their face and then they had this much. And so it was just like, like that's all I could see. <laughs> like most people. <laughs> that's, that's, that's cool though. That's, that's definitely different. Now, yep. besides this film, do you have anything coming up as far as, as far as doing a movie or do you have anything you're picking? I don't like, I don't know how that works um yeah like I I'm gonna do something next year that I can't say what it is yet but it's really exciting because um uh it's it's a modern adaptation of something that everybody's heard of and I can't say like what it is yet but um it's it's super super cool and I'm I'm a very well-known character I can say that but it's like uh it's a modern adaptation of something that wasn't initially like modern um, so it's, it, I think you'll be really excited when you find out what that is. I can't wait. I cannot wait. So it's going to be two movies now that I look forward to. That's, that's mm -hmm. awesome though. Like I, I'm really excited about it. I'm really happy for you too. And it's cool because again, I get to see, like, I like how I'm getting to watch you grow through each movie and I'm further on down the road and hopefully years down the road. I'm just like, Oh wow. Like she used to come on my podcast. Now look, she's on the big screen guys. Look, I think, <laughs> I think it's really awesome. And I think you'll be one of those actors actresses that can do that because you have the passion for it you have the drive for it you really really seem like you love what you're doing and at the same time if you're on a set that you don't really have that much fun with we'll say or didn't really care for we'll say you'll still do it and bust your ass and work work hard and just get the job done and make a great product i mean like i like you were saying a little while ago you didn't have the most fun on these three films that i've seen but these three films are some really really good films so i can only imagine how a film will be when you have a really good time on set and just have yeah. throughout the whole experience of it and probably mm -hmm. get the experience that you were probably expecting to get when you were a little girl writing, writing in your notebook. Like, this is what I want to do. Yeah, it, it was, it was exactly like that. Like when I would, um, 
when I would go see movies, like at the movie theater near my house when I was like little and stuff, um, or just like younger, every time we'd see a movie, there was like an arcade, like in the movie theater. And I'd always go ride the, like, uh, like the race car things, except it was like a motorcycle. Yeah. And I go ride that like every time after I'd see a movie. And for some reason that like little video game had this like wind that they'd blow in your face to make it look like you were like riding or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I'd be on those and I'd be thinking like, this is, I'm in a movie and I'm riding on this and this is like the fake wind that they're putting for the movie. And like for years I would ride that and I'd picture that. And like this recent movie, like we filmed that I was on a, like we had, I did scenes like stunts and stuff on the actual four wheeler, but there was a part where I was on like a fake four wheeler and they had a wind machine blowing it up in my face. And I'm like the shot that I'm like always pretending to do at the arcade. Like we filmed that. And there was a lot of stuff in that movie i'm just like yeah this is like how i pictured it to be so uh that was cool and i knew that i knew that it was like a like a a magical one when um uh i am i was doing the scene on the four-wheeler which was like really hard to do because it's like that you can't turn those things it's like, eh, like you can't turn it um but anyway like i was doing a scene and i had to do like a three-point turn on it and then like turn around and just be like yelling my lines as i was like driving away and stuff and um all the it's kind of like a reverse damsel in distress type thing and all the boys are just like stuck places and i'm just like i'm just like driving along in the four-wheeler and i'm just like gonna get out of there and the one guy is like no you're the only one left who can shoot it with the rifle and i like as i'm just like driving away i just like look at him and i'm like I don't even know how to aim that thing. And I just like drive off and I'm like, this is like, so like fun. <laughs> like it was that that's kind of when I did that. That was like when I realized like, yeah, this is a, this is a good one. Like this isn't, this isn't like a weird set. Like the other ones, it's like, this is a good set. <laughs> Cause I was like, it was just fun to do. Like, it was like kind of, a, it's just like, it's a really crazy like story. It's like, it's just kind of off the wall, <laughs> but it's fun. That's cool though. I think that, um, as far as like how you're saying with the first ones are kind of like a weird sets. I think it's probably good. You experience that first versus that one fun, fun set. Cause it's like, if you would have started up here with that exciting set and then kind of say you go down here to so that, those ones that aren't as fun, you're going to be like, Oh, this damn. Like I had this much fun on this and now it kind of brings yeah. it down. Yeah. And but, I think it, uh, I think it gives me a, a bigger like appreciation for it because mm-hmm. like this last one, it wasn't all fun for sure. Like I, I didn't like you know, doing it night instead of the day, like that was exhausting because it was hard to sleep in the day. And like, it was freezing. And there, there was a lot of things that I didn't like about it. But because I'd had those like really weird experiences first, I could like really appreciate the fun moments like more than I would have, um, I think, otherwise, if I like did it first. Yeah, that's true. That's really true. I, it's I think it'll get better from here. You might still get on a few weird sets, but maybe you'll find some Maybe with those next ones, you'll find fun things about those sets. Maybe you did with the last ones too, if you really think about them. Yeah, I, yeah, there, there were definitely fun moments on all those three for sure. Um, just like overall, they were like kind of strange, but um, there were definitely fun moments on all of those. That's good. That's good, and I, I'm very excited to see what you have in store for us next. Um, if there's anything you want to plug, feel free. Let people know where they can find you if you want them to find you, and all that other fun stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I always want them to find me. (laughs) Um, But yeah, um, if you haven't seen Navigo Hunting or The Crumbs, watch them on Amazon and uh, watch for the 13th Cross coming in March. I don't know where it's going to be, but I'm probably Amazon. And um, yeah, I'd love it if you'd follow. I'm on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And so if you're not following me, I'd love if you'd follow me because I post cool stuff. (laughs) Yes. And again, I know I say this to you every single time we record, but just when you get a chance, just please email me your links again. Cause I always forget like each time we record again, <laughs> Okay, <laughs> it comes out, which I'll give you a heads up when it does come out. I'll drop the links below so people can, I'll drop the link for the crumbs movie and also for where they can find you at for your fan pages and all that awesome stuff. Awesome. Definitely, definitely go check her out. People, as you can see, she's awesome. And as always, I'll see.